Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com That's my website This is Let Me Boy You To Sleep And my name is Jason Newland Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes yeah <sighs> I've done the sensible thing today and I'm recording this in the early afternoon so it's 2.42 p.m. instead of waiting till 7 or 6 when I'm tired I generally don't do it first thing in the morning, although I have, I have, I've done it late at night as well. There's probably not a time that I haven't done it over the years, but there you go. Can you believe that in, I think February, so what have we got, another six months, no. Well, yeah, probably another six months. I'll have been doing this for seven years. These let me boy to sleep. This podcast will be seven years old. Wow. I'm not even sure what number it's, it is. What number is it? What number is it? Me, 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 me. It is, that's weird, it is Facebook, how weird, normally it lets me, oh there it is, it is number, this is number 1180, and this is step mum number two, step mum number two, or second step mum. A few people have asked me to do because I did say I was going to do it and I haven't. It's almost like you expect me to do what I say I'm going to do. Wow. When did that happen? <laughs> when have you expected me to be reliable? Come on. So before I go any further, I want to say thank you to Christine and Jennifer for your birthday PayPal gifts. I made a little image and posted it on the Facebook Pastebook group. I'm a bit tired. I've also started to upload videos, my Let Me Boy to Sleep videos, to uh, a private album, Let Me Boy to Sleep, which is only available on the private group, the Jason Newland's Boring Group. Something I posted the other day, I'm thinking about not not sticking to it. Is I was going to only well basically I posted all future QA Fridays will now only be available to members of this Facebook group. Then I started to think, hmm. It's just the Q&A Fridays seem to be quite popular. I don't really know why, but they do. They seem to be quite popular on the podcast. So I'm thinking if I put it onto the private group, I'm going to be depriving a lot of listeners from hearing it. If they... I mean, you know, some people aren't on Facebook. The only a tiny, tiny proportion of people that listen to my podcasts are actually on my Facebook group. I've got 182 people and probably get anything up to a couple of million plays a year of my different podcasts. So I'm guessing 182 people are not, that's not all the people listening. I'm guessing. It's, it's a guess. I might be wrong. I might be really wrong. Should we do... 
you know what? I just heard. I, I read your thoughts. You know what, JJ? You haven't read your stats out for ages. Wow. Really? You really want me to do that? Yeah, please. Okay, then. All right. I'll sign in. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Ba, ba. So, I'll sign into the main podcast, which is the Hypnosis of Sleeping Deeply. That, that always gets way, way, way more plays than the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast. Even though I do post the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast on there as well. Just get more plays. So, you know. Ugh. I don't know how I can get the home. How do I get the stats on my phone? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Your mega mix. Mega mix. Go away. Weekly wave. I'm not sure if the stats are available on here. This is a bit rubbish. Library. Oh. Oh, yes, I can. Yes. No, no, no. Listening history. Listening history. It's not offering stats. You are so lucky. You avoided hearing the stats. So likes. Nope. You avoided yeah. So my most popular. Yeah, that's weird. The most likes I've had on a podcast episode was 1,127. Let me boy to sleep. Neighbours deliveries. 20th of May 2024. Uh, playlist albums. No albums. What's an album? I know what an album is, but I don't know what an album is on SoundCloud. So that was pointless. I need my laptop to get you the stats. I feel very fortunate, don't you? <laughs> I bet you do. Wow. Let's see if I can open in, uh, open app. Download the app. So maybe I have the app. I already have the app. So why am I... Oh, no, download the app. No, I can't be bothered. So anyway, I'm going to talk about my stepmama, my second stepmama. And also, Christine, you posted a message saying on the Facebook group, you're saying that your SoundCloud player stopped working. I checked on there and everything seems to be working okay on my end. So I'm not sure what happened. Um, you are... All the podcast episodes on SoundCloud are also available on Apple Podcasts, on mm, all of the different places. Spotify, uh, you pretty much Every app, every popular app, they should generally be on there. They sometimes take a little while to update, but they're, they're on there within a couple of hours of me uploading them. So I'm not quite sure what happened. Anyway, the uh, I think the last to Let Me Boy to Sleep 10 hour one from last, well, a few days ago, Friday, had about one and a half thousand plays of that one just the 10 hour version one so it's i kind of thinking uh plus the te the five hour one the zero with no music and with music so that's like one two three that's probably like maybe three thousand plays that i will miss or not 3,000, but maybe 2,500 that I'll miss if I made it private. So I'm probably not going to do that. 
sorry but I do have an idea of maybe doing a recording that's only available on the free you know the the Jason Newland boring group on Facebook just just for members only I'm giving it some thought so let me just get my that's it. Don't worry, it's my jacket, it's my jumper. I'm unzipping. Don't get worried. Stats. <laughs> God, do you remember when I used to read out the stats all the time, it seemed? I mean, I didn't really, but it just... I mean, there was a period when I was very excited about the stats, and I'll be honest, I'm not quite so excited anymore I mean I, I like it when I get a good day so a good day now is a good day's maybe 10,000 in a day 10,000 plays but there was a time when I I was getting sometimes a lot more than that especially during lockdown I uh, definitely picked up a lot of traffic during that period. So, yeah. It's alright, it's still growing. But I think sometimes if I don't record regularly, as in every day, then the stats do go down. The The listeners, I just get less less listening. Less listening? Less, li less listening from listeners. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So, what about my stepmum number two? Well, what I do, I'll start from the beginning. Not my beginning, and not her beginning. Uh, but the, the first time... Well, I've mentioned that I used to work in a chip shop probably a thousand times... The we had a when I left the chip shop, it which was nineteen eighty eight around April time, maybe March. It was around that time. It was definitely like just the beginning of spring ish, and I went and lived with my dad for probably two months just this a short term thing until I got myself another job which I did I got a job in a co-op and the just stacking shelves on the till is a, a co-op is a supermarket it was only a little it was like a local supermarket for local people very small uh, not really any bigger than a I guess slightly bigger than a corner shop. Like a corner shop news agents slash groceries. But not, not very big at all really. Although probably had a bit more room out the back than perhaps an average shop maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. So anyway, I I got a job in there and I was terrible at that job. <laughs> I was really, really bad. Just. I was okay. You know, oh, I don't know. I didn't like the jacket they gave me. Now you could maybe say, well, that's not really a reason to, to, to be awful at your job. But it was brown. It wasn't nice and it smelt to me it smelt I didn't know what of not of me because I didn't smell back then <laughs> back then <laughs> I didn't I, I was you know I was young and fruity and uh, always smelt wonderful you know, constantly showering and you know just very because I, I wanted to hopefully um have a girl touch me one day that was kind of my hope 
So, you know, I was sort of 17 at the time and I hoped to maybe hold someone's hand, you know? So I thought if I keep keep things clean, maybe maybe things will work out. Mm. And anyway, this, this jacket, because I was so skinny, this jacket was super tight on me. I mean, it was like a... You could probably put it on a 10-year-old boy and the 10-year-old boy would have enough room to kind of manoeuvre. I just, it was it tight on me because I was so little, really. I was very, very skinny. It didn't have any fat on me at all, just in my brain. But the actual, it was restricting and I kept having to bend over and uh, stack the shelves, the lower shelves, and it used to just, I didn't like it. I like loose stuff. The, the only time I've liked tight things is a tight t-shirt when I've when my body's been um, socially acceptable. You know, when it's been okay. When I've been able to go out in public with a t-shirt without getting arrested. You know, for being too fat. So I don't mind a tight t-shirt then. I get to show off my muscles. But when I used to have muscles, when I had someone to show off my muscles too, <laughs> in the old days, 25 years ago, whatever. So, but back then, I had muscles, but they were kind of inverted. So I knew I had them, but you had to really press hard. <laughs> you need an x ray to see them. But anyway, that's enough about my muscles. I. What the heck am I talking about? So I didn't like that job. And then I got uh, the, the lady that was the manager. She. Was she the manager when I'm. Yes, yeah, she was. Yes, yeah, she was the manager when I moved in. So she was the manager. I got. She had a flat upstairs and then I moved upstairs. I was her lodger. So I moved out of my house. Well, I moved out of my dad's house, rather. Which was literally just up the road anyway. To be above the shop. I didn't realise. I hadn't really thought it through. Even though I already knew this. Because I'd lived above my last place I worked. Is it's hard to skive off for the day. It's hard to phone in for a sickie. And then what do you do? Because you can't go out in case someone sees you. That's a downfall which meant I never had a day off in the chip shop. And if I had a day off when I was in the the co-op, the supermarket, I had to kind of hide or wait till they closed before I went out or go out before they got in. If that makes sense, yeah. So, or put a disguise on. Which is a lot of work. It's just a lot of work, it really is. Well, there was a wig shop opposite. So I... I don't know why there was a wig shop, but there was. I wonder what they sold. Yeah, there, there, was, there was a wig shop. I feel... Always, I know it was a hairdresser. I feel it was a hairdresser's. But they had wigs in, in, the, in the window. Wait a minute. But they kept... Oh, I see. The, the wigs kept changing. I realised it was actually just people waiting to be seen. No, it's the customers sitting on chairs in front of the window. It wasn't wigs. Oh, and there was, yeah, there was a news agent as well. And there was a laundrette directly opposite, which was handy, especially for um, washing clothes. Very good for that. So, so I, when I moved, so, I, but during that small period of time that I was living at my dad's, in 1988 it might have been two and a half months but it's a long time when you're 17 I I used to ride on a, a woman's bike see you can say that back then it was a bike for females see I never understood this okay bikes back then that were made for female, and I don't know if that's allowed to be done anymore, you know, with the climate as it is, but it was, 
uh, at the time a female bike. But it was the most comfortable bike I'd ever ridden in my life. And I didn't have to put my leg all over right across the bar because there was no bar. It was like a a V or an L. So there was no bar where my groin was. And for the first time, my bottom felt comfortable, which sounds weird saying that out loud, but, you know, just like riding, I mean. Because previous to that, I'd had a racer and I'd had a BMX and none of the, none of the bicycle saddles particularly were comfy. Right, mate. Right, darling. I gave him a bone to eat and he's had it. He's eaten some of it and I think he's, he's happy just to come and chill out with me now. Oh. So I had this... I was riding on this bike, I was so comfortable. It just, it was almost like, I don't know how to explain it. For the, it just, it was heavenly. It was so soft and it was almost like I wasn't even sitting down. Like I was sitting on a cloud and moving my legs. I mean, generally, I guess if I was on a cloud, I wouldn't want to move my legs. I always imagine if I was sitting on a cloud, I'd be on some kind of uh, cross-legged position. But that wouldn't really be ideal because my lower back doesn't really allow me. I'm not, I'm not very flexible, so I can't really do cross legs. I need to sit on a chair. But I don't know. I mean, clouds look like they would they hold a chair? But then I guess if I'm able to sit on a cloud, I probably wouldn't matter, would it? You could just make a chair out of the cloud, part of the cloud, because it looks quite pliable. Meaniable. Meaniable? Mooniable? What's the right word? I don't know what the right word is. You can manuable? Mediable. You know, you can... <laughs> you can... Like, not clay, because that... that you wouldn't, get, you wouldn't get a cloud made of clay, would you? That'd just be too heavy. And it'd be a weird colour. Although I suppose you could get white clay. You can get white clay, can't you? Yeah, not all clay's brown, is it? Uh, so, yeah, so I used, to, I used to ride that bicycle. And... It's... I remember I had... Uh, I was, was it, yeah, I was, I was pulling up to the, to the shop, so I get off the bike, because I always like, used to park it outside, I'm not sure if I used to lock it or not, I don't know, but it was outside, there was nowhere to put it, uh, so it was like in the public, but kind of near the, near the shop, and I'm just taking off me clips, because I used to have these clips to keep me, sh me trousers, from going into the, into the, um, not the railing, the, what do you call it? You know, the thing that turns around. No, not the wheels. The chain, yeah, the bicycle chain. Well, I guess everything on it is a bicycle something, isn't it? You know, the bicycle handlebars, the bicycle wheel wheels, wheelie wheels, you know, so everything's the bike, yeah. I could have just said the chain. So... I I came, so I got off the, and I was just taking the bicycle clips off of me, of me f legs. And um, so I'm bending over because that's the best way to do it. I mean, I suppose I could have lifted me legs. I mean, sometimes if I was in a place where there was a chair, I put me legs on a chair, you know, my feet rather, one at a time. Otherwise it defeats the object because you just higher up but you're still just as far away from your feet so i put my feet up and i'd get it off that way but there was no chairs outside so i had to kind of i mean back then i could touch my toes fairly easily but i might have if there was no one around i probably would have just bent me bent me knees but if there's people around i'd show off and touch my toes and do it because 
Well, sometimes it's just right, isn't it? It's the right thing to do. It's, you've got to let people know what you've got to offer. It's, you know, how, as far as I was concerned, there might be a woman out there, you know, that, I, that might really, really, like, want to have a boyfriend, but she hasn't met anyone that can touch their toes yet. And that's the one thing she needs. Doesn't mind about anything else. That's the only thing, that's the only requirement on her tick sheet, but she's yet to find one. And then she walks down the road and she sees me touching my toes and that's click. Oh yeah, got to have that. And she, she, that's it. Then she f tells me how much she loves me and we fall in love and I, I just, I go for it because probably the only option I'm going to get. So it's like, yeah, brilliant. And we have kids and and now I'm 54 and got grandkids and just enjoying the peace right now. We want to get home. No, that, that, that didn't actually happen, did it? But yeah, but just saying that's kind of why whew, I got carried away with that story. Blimey. Um, so anyway, I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I'm bending over taking the bicycle clips off. Guess what they were called? They were called bicycle clips. The bell. You used to call it the bell, but not the bicycle bell, just the bell. Why not? Everything else is the bicycle. You got the bicycle clips, the bike chain, the bike seat, the bike wheels, but the, the bell, well, I suppose you could call it the bike bell handlebars and bike handlebar I mean they have but then handlebars pretty much it's assumed that it's for a bike because you don't get handlebar handlebars on a washing machine usually or on the back of a seagull or I don't know so anyway so I'm sitting there I'm not sitting there I'm I'm doing my I'm, I'm taking the bicycle clips off anyway and this bird well basically I hear of a, a splash on my shoulder and a bird probably a seagull because I live near the sea did a big poo on my shoulder I mean I don't think they purposely aimed for my shoulder I was so little back then, I probably couldn't even aim for something that small, but it splashed off my shoulder and onto the saddle of the bike. Now, luckily, I was somewhere where I could get something to clean it off, so that's what I did. I went in, went into the shop. Hello, everyone. And for some reason, they found it funny that I'd been pooed on. Brilliant. So I go into the back to the storeroom. It's like a, I don't know, the staff room, I guess. It was a tiny little room. But that's where we used to, where the staff used to go. So I guess it's a room where the staff went. So I guess that is a staff room. And there was, there was a kettle. There was a sink. So I rinsed off the... I got like some toilet paper or whatever. So actually, it was probably some paper that was in a thing. Because let's face it, we was in a grocery store. We had lots of cleaning stuff that was available because we used to also clean the clean the place ourselves as well. Didn't have cleaners come in, so I had uh, I cleaned off my shoulder. And they, I remember, I think Doris or whatever, knows, said to me, "You need you need to start working in a minute." I said, I know, but I need to clean off the poo. She said, you cleaned it off. It's gone. I said, no, there's some poo on my saddle. She said, what kind of saddle is it? I said, what the saddle on my bike? She said, why didn't you say bike saddle then? It's confusing. It could be a saddle. It could be any kind of saddle. It could be a, you could have a horse out there. It, it just gets silly sometimes. So I just said, okay. Um, what I did, luckily, she was quite easily distracted. All you had to do was give her a piece of cheese. 
and she was happy. She just got completely lost, tro- tro- you know, lost her trail of thought. I can't imagine that happening. <laughs> but anyway, I gave her a bit of cheese and she was happy. So I went and sat in the corner and was eating that. And I said, why don't you sit in the chair? She said, <laughs> she used to make that, that noise as well. <laughs> this is silly. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> oh dear. So... I said to, I said, I'll be back in a minute. I just need to clean the saddle. Because if I leave it, it's going to dry. And it will be difficult to, to clean it off. Plus, it's not my bike. It's my dad's bike. It wasn't actually, he, he, it was his. But it was, I think he inherited it from someone. But anyway, it was still, he owned it. And he did say to me, whatever you do, don't, don't wreck it. Which was very trusting of him how would I wreck a bike actually I did crash it into the back of a car so maybe that's what he was talking about so anyway he uh, I go outside to the front I've got this little cloth it's a damp cloth because there's a sink it was dry to start with but I made it damp by putting it under the sink because I find that's the best way to make a dry cloth damp is by putting water on it so uh, I thought I'd try that first. If that don't work, then I'll get some kind of polish or something and just nick a little bit from the thing, you know, because back then there was no locks on them. Do you know now that you have to, have to unlock or uh, like turn in order to, for it to open? Back then everything, you could spray it and no one would know. Anyway, I, so I go outside I bend down again just to touch my toes. You know, I like to do it every every 10 or 15 minutes. I used to do it back then because I really wanted a girlfriend. So I go over to the bike and I start wiping it over with the, the damp cloth. And it... It smudged a little bit because it was a it was a black or was it brown? It was a black leather uh, seat. Very comfortable. Did I mention how comfortable it was? Oh, I went to wipe off. Even the even the the seagull poo was like, oh please don't. This is so this is so comfortable. Just just leave me here. I said no. It's a bit, I'm sunbathing. I said no. You got to get off. Oh, this this is the most comfortable bicycle saddle I've ever been on I said yeah I can understand that Vinny's all over me so I go to the bike I clean off the seagull poo and I dry it off with my coat because I put my brown jacket on at this point Draw it off with that because I thought, if anything, it will it will make my coat smell nicer because it did. I just didn't smell nice. Anyway, Vinny, get comfortable, mate. Get comfortable. He's all fidgety. Get comfortable. He doesn't know what to do. When I'm sitting this side of the chair or this side of the sofa, he doesn't know where to sit because he's. When I'm the other side, he's got two different places he sits. Or lays down one's on the, the the leg of the chair and the other one is like right near where I am now he's trying to get the equivalent of like he's laying down on me he wants to he wants to cuddle don't you you want to cuddle I love it when you cuddle it makes me happy it makes me happy Vin I'm just cuddling him now so yeah so I clean that off I wipe it over with me with me sleeve and I smell the sleeve <clears throat> a, bit of a bit of a frog in my throat I think I, I, so I smell my sleeve and it doesn't smell quite the same as the other sleeve and I'm thinking is that the is it is it the smell of the jacket as it normally is or is it just 
the smell of well uh, you know I used to wipe my nose on it so it, is it that or or uh, uh, or you know I didn't know so what I thought well there's only way to tell really if the saddle's clean or not uh, so I gave it a sniff so I thought I'd smell it make sure it was clean just at that point just at that moment A lady walks past. And. Gave me the weirdest look. I thought maybe she knows me. So I wave at her. And. She didn't wave back. And I thought. Why she give me a weird look. All I'm doing is sniffing a saddle of a lady's bike. That's when it clicked. Like, oh, I'm sniffing, I'm sniffing the bicycle seat of a lady's bike. She might not know that it's my bike. Well, you know, my dad's bike. But she might not know that it's actually, I'm the one riding it. And because she wasn't there earlier, she didn't know that... Uh, a pigeon or a seagull. I still don't know. It could have been a pigeon. Let's say a seagull. I think it was a seagull sized poo. Actually it was an eagle sized poo. But I don't know if we have many eagles around there. Because I don't live in Arizona. I think Arizona is where eagles live isn't it? So. Yeah. Yeah. What I, what I thought, the thing it didn't click to me, because to start with, when she looked over and I waved to her, I thought, oh, I might have pulled it. I think she might like me. Uh, I think I was wrong. I think I might have misjudged that one. Which, in retrospect, perhaps I shouldn't have asked her out. Oh, well. So yeah, that was weird. But yeah, so I moved above the shop. And I lived at my dad's. So when I moved into my dad's, I didn't even know that he was seeing anybody. I didn't know that he had a girlfriend until I kind of moved in and I met her. And she became my second stepmom. Vinny's literally laying right over me. He never does this. So I'm holding him by his chest. And he's just lying over part of my stomach and my legs. He's so, <laughs> so relaxed. I don't know, don't know why he's doing this. This is weird. So, yeah. So I met her for the first time during that period. And... We got on really well straight away, really. She's very lovely. I don't think I met her kids at that time, during that period. But I remember we used to watch Brookside together, which was a soap opera. On It was not on anymore, but it was on Channel 4. And, yeah, I used to get on really well with her. But she... I mean, at that time, my dad didn't have really much in the way of cooking utensils. I think there was a microwave and that was it. He had a kettle and a microwave. So everything was pretty much, you know, microwavable. There was no cooking to do there's no couldn't cook anything properly which I didn't really care to be honest I just have like sandwiches and things like that so and he was living a bachelor's like on a like a like a bachelor's life I guess at the time for a little while but he spent yeah he'd be with her I think he'd be at hers quite a bit so I didn't really get to know her like I got to know her, but not like hugely well, but got to know her a little bit during that period. 
And then I moved back into my dad's again, probably in 19, beginning of 99, January, 89. So this is 88, and then now it's 89. So less than a year later, I needed somewhere to live. And I stayed with him for a couple of months again. And I... Yeah, I remember I got to know her more then. She was more around. I think by this time, my dad had a cooker. <laughs> um, and, you know, he was, I guess, because she was staying over, she needed to have nice thing, you know, have it nicer. So I got to know her more and... I probably thinking about it probably spent Christmas I would have spent New Year's Day with them at my nan's because we had New Year's Day dinner so I would have seen them for that at my nan and granddad's and then I think during that period when I was living at at their house, or at my dad's house. She, I think I met her kids then. And we... I was going to start a jewellery company. Selling jewellery. That I'd already kind of dabbled in over the, like a year ago. So I was going to get into that. And my stepmom, second stepmom, actually... Helped me with that and helped me to get print um, leaflets printed and stuff like that. Nothing came of it in the end because it was another non-starter really. This is the only thing I've ever stuck to. This thing that I started in 2006. The only thing in my life really. Apart, I suppose I did stick to my degree and I got that finished. But generally, I've, I've been a lot of start and stops in my life. He is absolutely shedding his hair, this one. He's needing some loving today for some reason, aren't you? You're needing some loving from Daddy. It's really cuddly. He's not normally like this. He's enjoying the attention and all the like massaging his head and stuff. You're happy, aren't you? Why are you quite relaxed? It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. He does fall asleep sometimes listening to me. Uh, so yeah, I so I got to know a little bit then, and. It was kind of one of those things that just gradually increased, if that makes sense. Um, I think I got to really know her a lot better in 1990 when, again, I'd, I'd moved back. So I moved to London and I moved back for... I was there a little bit longer this time, so I went back in, I think it was April, maybe end of March, April, until I was living at my dad's till September. So five months. I counted that on my fingers. And I'm glad it wasn't more than, more than six months, otherwise, I don't know how I would have done that one. That's why I was using my toes. So I, I was living there. This was much better, though, to be honest, because I was a bit older, a bit more mature. I was still very immature, but a little bit, um, a bit more worldly, worldly wise, because I'd lived in London on my own, and so things were going quite well. I had two jobs, so I was fairly busy. And 
my dad was hardly ever there. He'd be there during the week. So I didn't really see him because I was doing nights. So I was working nights, working 10 to 6 or something. So I didn't see him very often. And he wasn't there at the weekend either. He was usually at, his, at my stepmum's. So that was quite a, a nice period. And we moved moved house in August into where he is now. At the time, I didn't realise that he was doing it in order to move her into the house and both her kids into the house because it was a three-bedroom house. I didn't really click. Um, but he never asked me to leave. But I did. I mean, they, they'd already gotten engaged to be married. So I should have kind of got had a clue, really. So I remember my dad saying, oh, we're engaged to be married. And this is probably... Maybe during that period, like, that I was there, maybe the year before. But no, probably not. Probably that period when we was at the the house before he moved. So it would probably be like maybe May, June time, 1990. And he said, oh, we're, we're engaged to, we're engaged, but we're going to have a 20-year engagement or something. He was, he was joking. And they did actually get married in 1992. So, was it? August, so yeah, it was quite, it was still quite a while. It was still a two year, two years, two and a half years before they got married. But it was, yeah, they got married. So then, um, when I moved out of there, out of the second house, when, I, when they moved, although it was quite nice living there, I kind of, I probably moved out knowing that they wanted me out. Probably. Um, yeah, I guess there was a clue. I don't know what the clues were. I mean, there was, there was once I saw this... Well, I, I walked, walked out into the kitchen. There was a big banner, Get Out, Jason leave now so you know there's a few, a few little hints you know nails in the bed things like that just just little things goldfish in the bathroom sink now like, i still under, don't understand that one because i thought that was cute why would why would you move out of a place that had a goldfish in a kitchen sink or a bathroom sink it's like it's nice it's a nice touch, but apparently that was a warning because I didn't tell you this. My stepmom's actually a mermaid, so in Mermaid Land, Atlantis, uh, that is actually putting a goldfish in a bathroom sink is, you know, like the mafia putting a heads, a horse's head in a bed, and you know, it's a similar thing. I didn't understand because I didn't know mermaid language. Yeah, it's weird. I remember saying to her, "So, are you, you know, it's like let's just like get this sorted out. Do you want to move? Are you planning to move in here with your kids?" And she said, <laughs> "Because she was a fish, and that's what fish sound like to me." There must have been a better fish. Maybe like a... I guess that was kind of like a well. No. That's more like a dog howling, isn't it? Anyway. She wasn't really a fish. Um, but she... she they, they wanted me... Well, I think, yeah... 
They wanted to. Be, they were going to get married. They wanted to be together. It's just. It's just natural, isn't it? It's, it's nothing weird. So I moved out of my own accord. Eventually. Uh, I figured after the locks were changed six times that maybe that was a hint. Maybe. Uh, yeah. They also moved five times as well. So anyway, I got my own place and everything. But from then on, they were always together. So they moved in shortly after I moved out. 12 minutes, in fact. And they moved in. They were waiting in a van. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what if I hadn't moved out today? How would you, like, because I, I just moved out. I said, oh, I'm, I'm moving out today. And my dad was like, it, I've never seen him so excited. He was literally dancing. He was defying gravity. It was almost like there was strings, like a puppet. And he was just like, there was no, there was no gravity. And he couldn't control his legs or happiness. At first I thought he was crying, he was upset, but it was tears of joy. And so he said, oh, okay. And he opens, opens the door and the front door and my stepmom and the kids were all there waiting there. I'm, all the suitcases are already, already in the garden, everything. It's like, what, what would you have done if I wasn't moving out today? He said, don't worry, you were. I said, what? What? said you were moving out today you just i figured you knew that's why you left that's why you packed i said no he said did you not see the signs what he said come out here so he took me out the front door and painted on the front all the wall was you're not welcome here anymore leave by the way, this is for you, Jason, in case you didn't realise. That was in smaller letters. Because, well, it's a, a longer sentence. I can't believe he spelled my name J-A-Y-S-O-N. Doesn't even know how to spell his own son's name. <sighs> anyway, that wasn't really the issue, was it, I guess? But since, after that, going forward, I would be there pretty much most Christmases throughout ninety throughout the nineties. Um and I'd be there for birthdays and my dad's birthday and just so I, and I'd be visiting my nan so I'd see them on them occasions as well and you know, weddings and funerals and all, all those things over the years and it's, you it just, it's, yeah, just get to know people, I guess. It's, I've spoken to her probably hundreds of times, maybe probably more than that over the years, and I've stayed over loads and loads and loads of times. Not so much these days because of having Vinny and before that having whatever his name was, Albert, not Albert, Andre. <laughs> yeah, like I'm never going to forget his name. And we... I couldn't really stay over anymore. But before that, I used to stay at Christmas. Most years, actually. Generally. And sometimes I go periods when I didn't, but... Because I don't technically really celebrate Christmas. But... Yeah, it was... I mean, one of my happiest memories with... It, actually, one of my nicest memories ever, actually, was a time I spent with my stepmom number two. She used to be a cake decorator and also a florist. Uh, so she would like, flower arranging and stuff like that. So she was qualified at these things. She worked from home. I think she used to work in a florist as well, but then she started working from home, but she made the cakes and they had all the kitchen done out and made made correctly for guidelines, you know, in order so for her to work from home. And then I had an extension built on. Yeah, they did. They had an extension built on for the kitchen, specifically for the for her business. 
and yeah, but I forgot about that. Blimey. There are two extensions, one on the side and then one on the back. And they've also knocked through. I'm saying it like you know the house, but you know, they've knocked through. It's really weird. So I went there on Saturday and there was two rooms. One was a room that I used to sit and watch with her mum. We used to watch the the soaps on Christmas Day. So we'd be in the other room. It was nice and quiet. It was a table. And that's where they would generally eat throughout the year. And then they would eat in the conservatory, which was the extension at Christmas time in that. But then, uh, earlier this year, they knocked through. And it's almost like that room doesn't even exist anymore. I mean, on its own it doesn't. But it's the room looks so small. It's really weird. Because now, they've done it so you just walk in. They've done it in a way that you just walk in. Just, I don't know, it's, it just looks weird. It's nice the way they've done it, but it just, there's a settee. It's just some nice little place you can just sit and chill out. It's just weird though, because I've never seen it like that. I mean, the place was a complete dump when when we moved in. When I moved in there with my dad in September 1990, it was really gungy. I don't know if that's an actual word, gungy, but it was. It wasn't. It was just not nice. It was not derelict, but yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. You, you know what I mean? It was. Mm, it was, oh, I don't know. If you drop something on the floor, you wouldn't necessarily want to put it in your mouth. It's, that's the, or put it back in your mouth. That, that kind of situation. If you saw something on the floor, you wouldn't particularly want to just eat it. Like you would normally, perhaps. So, we... I got to know her a bit and you know, one of my happiest memories as I said she was she used to make truffles and chocolates and cakes and not just big cakes I mean she used to make birthday Christmas wedding all kinds of cakes Fun do they have funeral cakes I don't know but she used to make all these different huge big cakes for uh, big events and stuff locally as well as doing flowers as well so she was very busy but she also had these truffles she used to make and sell them on the market it was like a proper trade market thing it wasn't like a a market where you you buy old toasters and shoes and stuff um you know mag sticky magazines or whatever just it was like new stuff it wasn't really it wasn't like a junk a junk market and it was nice and I, I mean I helped her out one day and I went with her and we just just helped her set up the, the table came anyway so that the table was already there after we put a, a cloth over the table and just put everything out and there was samples but everything was all bagged up but there was samples on a plate where people could just test them to see if they liked them and then they'd buy a bag and I just helped helped you know just took the money and just gave them the stuff and it was a really really nice day and um, she did ask me why I kept uh, touching my toes and I I said don't worry about it um, but you know I still kept that up because I thought one day I might meet someone might there might be someone there at that at that um but it wasn't a jumble sale. I don't know what the right thing to call it. It was a market, like a proper like a food market kind of thing that you might have in your country maybe. 
not not necessarily farmers market, but but there was flowers, there was there was plants, there was I think vegetables, vegetables. There was I think someone was selling pillows as well or cushions. There might have been a wool a wool store where they were selling balls of wool. That'd probably be my second favourite one to work on. Because at the time I quite liked the idea of being a juggler. And balls of wool are quite good to juggle with. Because unlike cause if you get normal juggling balls and you know, just like tennis balls, and then and you juggle them and sometimes, you know, they'll drop, they'll drop on the floor. But if you drop a ball of wool, it doesn't hurt your foot if it lands on your foot. Those tennis balls, ow. I mean, you could argue, well, wear shoes then. But that's another thing I used to do. Because the thing is, if you're going to touch your toes, the best way to let someone know you're touching your toes is to actually have your toes out. And you push your toes up. Now look, ooh, my toes, literally, hand to toe, they can see. If you've got shoes on, it's not quite as obvious. You could be cheating. Trust me, I've cheated enough times doing it. I mean, I can pretty much touch my knees now, if I'm lucky. So, ooh. Vinny's really uncomfortable. He's, he's on the chair, but he's on the, the leg side of the chair. And it's just not comfortable because it's not what he's used to. Because he's, it's just really weird. He's not enjoying it, are you, Vinny? You're not enjoying being there. He'll be all right when I get back to sitting on this one. <laughs> or the other one, rather. But that that's one of my, um, it's one of my happiest adult memories, actually, is that, it wasn't it wasn't for a long time it was a few hours with her but it was probably the first time we'd really spent any time together on our own and it was nice i enjoyed it and i was on my best behavior i didn't i wasn't rude to anyone i didn't so i not rude but sometimes i it might come as a shock to you but there have been times during my life when I've been in a public situation and okay this, this might surprise you I have occasionally said something slightly inappropriate for the setting sometimes I said something and on this occasion I didn't I don't think yeah no I don't yeah I think I was I was on my best behavior and it was nice it was a very gentle gentle summer yeah it was it would be in the summertime probably and it was nice i liked it it was really good so that was probably 1990 as well i think so yeah i think unless of course it was later on when i was visiting and i just sort of could have been i could have been visiting for the weekend in the early 90s but I think it was about 1990. I don't have the exact date. Sorry. Yeah, blimey. So some of the qualities, I mean, I know it's, you shouldn't, it's not really about judging, but she's a brilliant cook. Now, I can cook. But I'm not a good cook. I can. I'm very basic, you know. I know how to cook things. I'm more likely to overcook something than to make it taste nice, just because then I know it's cooked. But you know, I did go to catering college and I had multiple jobs in catering over the years. But you know, I'm still. I'm basic, like cooking egg make toast I know how to cook frozen stuff but you know I've, I've never ever made myself a shepherd's pie I've never made myself a lasagna 
I could do these things. I know how to generally. I also know how to follow um, a menu, or well, not a menu, but uh, what do you call it? A recipe. I know how to follow that, to follow instructions, because you know I was doing that when I was at school, making stuff. I just I don't know, just haven't, just haven't, haven't for whatever reason. Although I could really do a shepherd's pie with some beans right now. That'd be nice. A nice shepherd pie with cheese on top. With baked beans. But a small one. Not small baked beans because they're all pretty small, aren't they? But a small pie. I don't want like a big... You know, I don't eat much in one sitting. And I don't really want to eat shepherd's pie every day for two days or three days every meal for two days or whatever no another thing I quite like is really large Yorkshire puddings with something in the middle whether it's like shepherd's pie or or something nice oh lovely so I toad in the hole Toad in a hole inside of a big Yorkshire pudding. Now that's special. I used to eat a lot of you frozen toad in the holes. I think they were Auntie Bessie's. Yeah, I used to like them. Wow. So, not only is she a great cook, because, and that's kind of a shallow reason to like someone, I, I realise that. But, she's always been welcoming to me. Always been welcoming. Uh, in the same way as my nan was always welcoming to me. She never turned me away. Always, um, just always been kind, always been friendly. Vinny, calm yourself down, mate. <laughs> Calm yourself down. No. Right, he just started barking. I think he heard someone going out of their door or something. Completely lost it, didn't you? Um, yeah, so she's very... Step mummy number two. A very lovely person. And, you know, technically she kind of gave me a sister and another brother as well. You know, her kids. And they were the same age, pretty much a little bit younger than my little brother. So that was good for him as well, to have other kids that were the sort of same age. And it's, I guess, you know, over the years I've watched them grow up, have boyfriends and girlfriends and go through various different things. And... Then both get married and have kids, and now they're in their forties. It, it's you know it's just weird. They were like eight years old when I first met them. I think eight or nine, and now they're yeah, wow. <laughs> it's it's weird. It's like thirty, how many years? So 1990, 2000, 2010, 2020, so 34 years, 34 years, and they've been married for 32 years, blimey, not, not my steps brother or sister, because they'd have to have been six when they got married or something, so yeah, it's, it's, it's weird just seeing see them grow not grow old but it, you know we all kind of got older at the same time we're well, not at the same time but you know what I mean we're all aged as everyone does and I used to get on this I've mentioned this before I used to get on really well with her mum who was my step nan got on really well with her we used to chat 
chat and chat and chat and chat and chat. It was very, really, really enjoyed talking to her. It's very funny. And it's quite weird because I had a different relationship with her to my own nan. I mean, there was no one like my nan, ever. No one in my life was anything like my nan, my nanny Newland. She was uh, a different... Well, it's just, just, there was no relationship I've ever had or will have that was like hers. But in the same way, the relationship I had with my stepnan wasn't the same as the one I had with with my nan. It was a different one. It, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's different. Different people, different relationships. Just like the relationship I had with, that I have still, with my stepmom number two, was very different to the one I had with my stepmom number one. Because with her, she was, you know, I met her at the age of seven, well before I was, just before I was seven, and I, I attached myself to her, like a, a flea probably, <laughs> to be honest, I probably just, I completely, I, I grabbed her and I never let go, metaphorically, not literally, and I guess I've always been, ever since that kind of ended, I've been a little bit, yeah, that was probably the last time. Yeah, things changed after that. You know, once I hit 16, she moved on. I kind of stayed where I was for a while. And then when I was old enough, when I was able to get out, I did. I moved away for good from that town back in January 1991. I never went back, not to live anyway. I've been back to visit. I did on Saturday, just gone a few couple of days ago, but I never been back to live. So 1991 was the last time that I actually lived there. I've slept over loads of times, whether at my nan's or, well, you know, in the past, or at my dad's, or in a hotel even. I might have even stayed at my step. Sisters, I probably stayed at friends actually. I had a couple of friends, a, a girlfriend I had there for a while, so I stayed at her sometimes in the 90s. Yeah, blimey, those were the days, eh? Those were the days. But she's very kind, very nice, very. Very, very caring, and she's understanding as well. She's quite open-minded when it comes to things like mental health issues, and because she's got, she understands. She's more understanding about that stuff. She, she can, yeah, she understands it. If that makes sense, for for reasons that I'm not going to go into actually, but. Um, she's she's dealt with she's dealt with other people that have had stuff and yeah so when it comes to my situation and I actually had a conversation with her about it and she's really like um, she gets it Yet, my little brother is clueless. Like, really, why didn't you, you know, when I visited, because I got a taxi uh, to there, so why didn't you get a train? Why didn't you just get a train like anyone else? And, like, he couldn't get it. Couldn't, couldn't. It's not his fault, but it's just he couldn't, couldn't grasp the context of having, well, you know, being bipolar or whatever, because he's not, he's not, and he doesn't, I mean, even other people with bipolar are not necessarily going to understand what it's like for another person, because we're all different, aren't we? We all experience things different. But he 
it was completely and it wasn't through lack of caring it just didn't understand and there's loads of things millions of things that I don't understand so it's it's just you know it's I had a friend who said to me a while ago that she just because she had some family stuff happen and is the first time that she was didn't have any parents and and I couldn't relate to it because I've never had both parents really you know in reality I've never really had that sort of regularly in my life even now I don't have I don't have anyone that I could just I don't, they're not like round the corner and I see them every day or see them every week I see my dad a couple of times a year. That's about it, really. I haven't seen the rest of the family for five years until Saturday. So the only two people I see is my dad and my stepmom, my second stepmom. I don't call a second stepmom. I don't call a stepmom either. <laughs> With cards and you know, because my birthday coming this Monday coming, just in case I haven't mentioned it, we're fifty-four. But if there's any ladies out there that like me, I'm 34, okay? I don't mind lying. If you don't mind living a lie, I don't mind living a lie. I'd be quite happy. Um, so anyway, so I call her, I write down mum. Mummy and daddy, usually, or uh, mummy. When I, <laughs> That's what I do. Is uh, when I send them cards in the post, they always know it's me because I never put their names. I always put mummy or daddy on the card, like on the address, so they know before they open it it's from me. I've been doing that for decades. I'm very childish. It's it's I can't help it. I just for some reason I just don't like doing doing things how everyone else does them. You know how we're supposed to do it. They're supposed to put the Mister, and it's supposed to be his first name, or maybe just the initial and his surname. New Land. You're supposed to say it Newland. You're not supposed to say New Land. What do I want? My name. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But yeah, she's really nice and. She was, I mean, when both of her parents got ill, she looked after them. And so did my dad. I saw a different side to my dad. I didn't know he had it in him. I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't. And they both cared for quite a few years. They cared for both of her parents and my nan, so my dad's mum. They cared for them for years because for my nan, it was just really age. But she she did go practically blind and nearly deaf and very disabled. So he was he was he was going around her flat where she lived. She lived in sheltered accommodation. This is my nan. He was going around there sometimes three four times a day, just to make sure she'd taken her pills, to make sure that she was eating, to make sure that. The, the nurses had come because she used to have nurses come and uh, look after her. She had care workers to come and help her to have a shower and things like that. So he'd be coming in constantly, in and out, every day to make sure she was okay. And he also did the same for both of my stepmom's parents as well. And he used to, because her dad my step granddad he had Parkinson's and dementia so my dad used to take him to the toilet he used to look after him like that um, and my step mum used to do that care that personal care for her mum and I just didn't I didn't know my dad had it in him to I don't know I don't know why why wouldn't why would I think that I don't know but he, he was never the most patient person. And I, I think I've got, I'm not always the most patient person. 
sometimes. But to do that and to care, especially if and it wasn't his own father, you know, it, to, to be able to do that is just shows his true... Um, I don't know what the right word is. The kindness that's there that he doesn't... It doesn't really show. He's quite a... Stoic. Or stoic. He's quite stoic. He's quite a stoic person. So he kind of keeps... He's from that generation maybe. And because his dad was like that. Maybe he's just... He's learnt to be like that. You know, keeping things inside. And not really... Not really talking about things. Not to me anyway. He does talk about things to his wife because she's told me <laughs> he doesn't know but she's told me not not what he said necessarily but he does open up to her and so I don't, how did I get how I am that's what I don't understand so my younger brother he's kind of similar to my dad my oldest brother's I think from what I remember is quite similar to my dad in some ways kind of very kind of keeps it in and I just tell everyone everything not everything obviously but you know I'm I'm quite open I would say I'd say I'm fairly open about how I'm feeling and you know and stuff that's gone on and I did have a friend once say well why are you telling people about the the bipolar Especially when trying to help people and... Oh, my stomach's gurgling. It, you know, and I understood where he was coming from. And he was, he was saying it out of kindness towards me. Because I know this person cares about me deeply. As I do him. The thing is... I kind of understand it in a sense of... Why would you get help from someone that... Maybe from one angle or from an angle could be clearly not helping themselves or maybe isn't as stable as you'd expect someone you know maybe but to be fair it's not like I'm charging for a service I'm not counselling I'm not sort of seeing someone one on one I'm not pretending that I can do something that they can't do I'm not pretending to be sorted or to be perfect or because it, it, that would be the same as me coming on here or doing a video on YouTube offering financial advice. I'm the worst person in the world to offer financial advice to anybody. Apart from don't spend all your money. Don't give it all away. Don't help everyone. But then I would never want to say that to someone. Don't help people. Because helping people is the the best, kind of one of the best feelings in the world is helping people or feeling that I've helped people. You know, even when I was in Thailand and I was ripped off by this food place who made all these meals to give out to hungry people and there was hundreds of meals made and I didn't know that they charged me foreigner rates they charge me tourist rates instead of Thai rates even though I was giving the food out for free I didn't know but I found out afterwards but I I got such a a buzz from doing it just by giving people food you know cook, this is cooked food and I don't know, even though I spent more money than I had to spend, it felt good. And that's something I'm possibly never going to be able to do again. Now, I could have spent that money on something else. Probably much more enjoyable, actually. I could have gone on dates and toured around and visited islands or gone on a helicopter trip, got onto a yacht, not an expensive yacht, but had some days out, you know, on the sea and stuff, gone, but I didn't do that, I just, I wanted to, I wanted to know 
what it felt like to give away meals to hungry people. And I'd watch videos of people doing this on YouTube during COVID. Oh, I don't know how to say that word, but during lockdown in, in uh, Thailand. And I wasn't able to go out because we weren't allowed. No one was really allowed to travel back then. But as soon as I went out there, they were still partially in lockdown. Everybody still had to wear masks. Uh, you had to get your temperature done before going inside any of the shops. A lot of things were still closed down. And so there was a lot of jobs still hadn't been people. A lot of people didn't have work. And it was a lot quieter than it would normally would be. So even people that did have work didn't have enough work to live to, to live properly. Like the taxi drivers on the motorbikes, some of them were getting no customers all day. And yeah, it was a lot of bars were really quiet, a lot of the hotels were empty or closed or closed down. It was uh yeah, it was weird, a weird time. I mean, it's partly why they decided to redo the road in one of the busiest one of the busiest roads in the world when it's really busy. They decided to re-tarmac it or no repave it because there was hardly anyone around. So the government will just start to do that because they had an opportunity to finally do it. Wow. Anyway, so this is about my second step mum, not about paving, paving roads. So yeah, that, that was it really, is, you know, I've seen her every, every year, 30, was it 34 years, 35 years, 36 years, so I've known her for 36 years. So I met her in 1988, 98, 2008, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 36 years. Is, did I say 36 years? Yeah. More than 12 years. Wow. And yeah, she just hit 65 last week. And the last time I was at her ha no, I wasn't. I did see her at her house in 2022, but I didn't go, didn't see any of the family, but I did visit there. And I, I felt a bit unwell, so I came home. And I, 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 yeah, the last time I saw the rest of the family was at her 60th birthday party. It's weird, just, yeah, five years, just like that. By the way, I click my fingers, but I'm not, I can't do it very well, so you might not have heard it. I'll do it again. Oh, shut up. So, yeah. So, I don't think I'm going to leave it until she's 70 before I see her again. Try and, uh, although I have seen them. I see them, they come up here a couple of times a year, uh, usually in the summer and around Christmas time. Or I try and get up there, but I haven't for a few years. Yeah, last year, I didn't go, yeah, because it was the end of November and my friend downstairs passed away, so I didn't, I didn't really leave didn't go out anywhere for a few months. Um, I, the previous year, I had a cough. So I didn't want to take it, a cough to them. Just in case I do, you know, it's, they're elderly now. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting on as well. So I did, but I didn't want to like take a, take a, an infection or whatever to them. So, I, and I didn't go that, that Saturday. And it was a Saturday, the like second Saturday of the month of December maybe the first Saturday of December 2023. But that, no, 2022, sorry. But that Saturday afternoon, because I was so I sat here 
and that's when I met Vinny for the first time. So if I hadn't been here that Saturday, well, I don't know, maybe I would have got Vinny anyway. I think I think my friend downstairs was set on me having him. He knew I'd take him. But it just would have been different. Because, you know, if, it just everything would have been different. If I'd have gone there, it, uh, my whole life could have been different from that moment onwards, from what it is, or from what it has been. You just don't know, do you? It's just, you know, as George Michael said, I want your sex, yeah. No, uh, Michael Jackson, no, uh, George Michael, turn a different corner and we never would have met. I mean, it's good, isn't it? It's true. I said that a bit, bit aggressive. Turn a different corner and we never would have met. That's aggressive. Turn a different corner and we never would have met. Ooh. See? It's like he was in the room. And it's true, isn't it? It's a whole butterfly effect and stuff. So I do wonder. Yeah. So, so that's it. I know I haven't necessarily really particularly maybe possibly <laughs> said a huge amount about my second stepmom but that's kind of the history you know I can't go into personal details about her life or but you know I talked about the it's more about how for me it's more about my life with her, my life, how it's been affected by her, and it's been positive. Uh, she's been. Th this, I, I guess, it's a stability. She's. I mean, it sounds maybe it sounds wrong to say it like that, but she's always there. She's always. I know, realistically, that's not necessarily going to be the case. As the same for me, I'm not always going to be here, am I? No, you know just reality but she's always been there she's if I phone her up she answers the phone and she always seems happy to speak to me and I know that she's probably not always happy to speak to me because she's got stuff going on and she's got her own stuff going on and but I don't know I just saw how how devoted she is to her kids to her grandkids and how devoted she was to her parents and and I know there's millions of people that are devoted and they you know they do that but I've not really seen it before I guess not first hand and seeing how she was with them and how, again how my dad was I mean I was kind of used to my dad um, being around to my nans because even when she lived in the house before she even long before she even broke a hip the first time he'd be in and out like at least twice a day to see her for years for you know since well even when my granddad was around he'd visit every, pretty much every day to say hello and have a cup of tea because he was self-employed so he could take a little bit of time off and when she was there on her own he'd come and make sure she was okay and he'd do a little bit of housework for her if she needed it so he's he's a really good he well he was a really really good son to her and to him I mean they all all all, all the kids all my uncles and aunts are we are really good kids, but to, to their parents, well, they were, you know. But the thing is, he's the one that lived closest, so it was it was easier for him. But then my aunt used to come down and stay over for a period of time, so she'd take over the reins and she'd look after her, and my dad'd have a bit of a break. And there was a, a routine from about 2005 onwards 
my auntie used to come and pick up my nan and take her back to their house. And she'd stay there for the Christmas period. So I didn't see my nan at Christmas. The last time I saw my nan at Christmas was in 2004. And I actually stayed at my nan's house. My aunt and my uncle was there. My aunt and her husband, they were there at staying at my nan's house as well. And it was, as an adult, it's the best Christmas I've had. Because I had the best of both worlds. So I had my nan. So I was living at my nan. Well, I'm not living, but I was staying there. So Christmas Eve, I was with my auntie and my uncle. I got on really well with my uncle. And, and I've known my auntie since I was a little kid. Since I was... To be fair, yeah, sort of six, seven. Which, but yeah, when I moved down, yeah, so since I was about seven... I probably knew her when I was bored as well, but I don't remember that far back. And she also used to live around the corner from us for quite a few years. Uh, so she's kind was kind of the closest auntie, like living wise, and the one that I saw the most growing up. Well, you know, sort of becoming a teenager and all that stuff. So. Yeah, so that was really good because we had Christmas Eve and I didn't know that they, they would have presents on Christmas Eve. That was a, a tradition that we never used to have. Just like take one present off the Christmas tree. I love that. Love that idea. It's brilliant. I say have a Christmas present every day of the year because that's the best thing about Christmas is the presents. I know we're not supposed to think that, but, you know... <laughs> It's true. No, it's it was just fun. It's the fun part. It's not even about the present. It's just kind of fun, even if it's just smelly old socks, which apparently is not a good gift to give. Uh, you're supposed to, if you're going to give someone socks, make sure they're clean or new. And so, without holes, mind you, there's no hole. How do you get them on your feet? Beep 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 What the hell was that? So yeah, um and then I think we went to church. I went to church with my nan Christmas Eve. Midnight mass, but it was earlier. It was like five o'clock or something. Cause she couldn't go to the late one. And then Christmas Day, so I had Christmas breakfast at my nan's. And Christmas Day, I, 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 I went to my dad's for Christmas dinner. And I think, I don't know if my, if my nan, I think my nan and my auntie now all came to my dad's for Christmas dinner. I've, I'm forgetting. I'm not sure. I might have gone for Christmas dinner and then come back to my nan's for Christmas evening. And then Boxing Day, my nan, we my nan, we all went to my dad's for Boxing Day dinner. It was something like that. And then the day after Boxing Day, I came home. And that's the first, that's the last time I spent Christmas with my nan. And I'm not going to say it's the last good Christmas, but it was the last one that was the most complete Christmas. Kind of, you know. Technically, the last, in some ways, the last real Christmas was 1984, really. And that's when I was living with a family, three brothers, my dad and the first stepmom and my nan and granddad. And that that was kind of, and her mum as well, my aunt and nan. So that was kind of the last time that we were all together. Because Christmas 
1985. I think I don't. Yeah, I don't think all of, all my brothers were around then. I think at least one of them had moved out or two. I, I lose track. So is there was a different. Unless they were there. It's really weird. I can't. I can't quite grab the times. Because it's, it's so long ago now. But. I'm thinking that. They weren't. That not all of them were there. Because. Yeah. I can't remember. So it's either. But I'd say 1984. Maybe 1985. Christmas. But 1985 was the last Christmas in that house. But I'm thinking 1984 was the last one where things were kind of normal. If if you can, uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Christmas was always good. Honestly, Christmas was always good. Always, always, always good. So we just had good Christmases. The My dad is, he is Father Christmas or Santa Claus. He is. He loves Christmas. Uh, he still does. Absolutely adores Christmas. It's his favourite time of the year, I think. And. Yeah, he is. I'm pretty sure if every day was Christmas, he'd be quite happy. Yeah, I reckon. And now with his big white beard, he looks like Mr. Christmas. So I hope I kind of did okay with this podcast episode because I've never had a requested podcast before. I know I'm the one that mentioned I was going to do this, but I've had a few people actually request it. Like, are you going to do it? You did the one about your first stepmom. What about your second stepmom? You said you were going to. Where is it? When are you going to do it? Do it now. So I have... So there, <laughs> I've done it. I I I I I only gone and done it. So I hope it was all right. It's you know just a standard. <laughs> it's done. I don't know. It might have been silly. It might have been pointless. It might not have been very informative. But the bottom line, the whatever is, she's lovely. My second step, well, my first step mum was lovely and my second step mum is lovely. So I've been very lucky. Never had the, um, the was it the evil step mum or whatever kind of scenario. Never had that. So I've been very fortunate. I don't know if that exists, but I'm guessing not everybody can get on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been, I've been fortunate on that one. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye. Hey, man, man, man.